Welcome to part two of robotic arm manipulation with reinforcement learning. In this video, we're going to start coding up our networks. Um, so TD3, uh, twin delayed DDPG, is an actor critic uh, algorithm. So we're going to have an actor network that's actually responsible for you know, taking actions in the environment. And then we're going to have a critic network that is responsible for gauging how well the actor is doing. And uh, that combination allows the critic network to get a feel for what what action, uh, action and state combinations make sense in the environment. And then the actor network can, can learn from that and uh, you know, slowly move towards taking more advantageous actions. So going to go ahead and create a networks.py and import some of our libraries here. So import OS, import torch as T, import torch.nn.functional as F, import torch.nn as NN, import torch.optin as optin from torch.distributions.normal import normal and import numpy as np. All right, we're going to start with our critic network. So I like to define these as classes critic network and then dot module and uh, if you haven't come across this before inheriting from nn dot module basically gives you all of the um, all of the functionality of the module class under torch and it means that we only have to code a few very specific functions to to create a network branched off of that uh, that torch library so we're going to start with our init function. Uh, that's going to take our input dimensions as input dims. It's going to take our number of actions. Uh, FC1 dims, that's the first fully connected layer size. And we're going to set that to 256 as a default. FC2 dims, we're going to set to 128. Uh, this is not a very large network. It really doesn't have to be. We're going to give it a name, critic, and that comes into play when we're when we're saving and loading uh, checkpoint files. So we're going to say checkpoint dir equals temp slash td3 and learning rate is to the negative third. All right, so first we're going to call our super method, critic network self. So that initializes the super, the, the uh, class we inherited from. And then we can come through and start to set our own parameters here. So self input dims equals input dims self fc1 dims equals fc1 dims self.fc2 dims equals fc2 dims and on out And then self.checkpointfile is going to be a combination of os.path.join, self.checkpointdir, and then name plus underscore td3. Um, and what we're doing here is we're going to save a checkpoint every so often. So if you have to stop learning and come back to it, um, it'll it'll pick up from where the the model left off. If you need to run a test or something, 
then it's going to pick up that checkpoint file and run the test. That's what that's there for. Now we're going to declare our layers. So self.fc1 equals nn.linear, self.inputdims plus n actions and self.fc1 dims on the output layer. So let's talk about what we just did. So the whole point of the critic is to judge the judge the value of a particular action when paired with a particular state. So what we're doing here is we're effectively saying whatever the input dimensions are, we're going to be passing in the the inputs of the of the from the environment. So you know the the robot state, the state of the door, the state of the whatever objects are in the environment. And then we're also going to pass in the actions the robot took in that state. So that combination, input dims plus n actions, becomes the input to the critic number uh, network. And then of course the output is the, the dimensions of the first fully connected layer. For the second, we're going to say self fc2 equals nn.linear. That becomes self.fc1 dims self.fc2 dims and self.q q1 equals and we're just calling it q1 because this is the this is the q value in the network this is the quality um, score effectively you could just as easily call this self.output and it would it would be the same thing um, self.fc2 dims and then in this case we are only outputting one uh, one you know value as our as our value in the network all right down here we're going to call uh, we're going to declare our optimizer self.optimizer equals optim atom w and uh, if you haven't run into this before, Atom W is the Atom optimizer with uh, updated weight decay capabilities. That is important here. So we're going to use self.parameters. Uh, and, and the reason we're able to call self.parameters instead of what you may have seen before, which is you know calling like a network, passing a network into your optimizer and calling parameters, is that uh, you know we are our own we're our own class here. We're our own subset of that module class. So we can just say self.parameters in our optimizer. We're going to pass in our learning rate. So LR equals learning rate. Uh, and we're going to pass in a weight decay of 0 0.005. Um, I found a lot of this through experimentation. So I, I found that I wasn't quite getting the, the exploration I needed without the weight decay. Um, so when I added weight decay to the, the critic network, it uh, helped promote a little bit more exploration and helped me break through a ceiling I was running into. One of the reasons that a lot of these parameters are, you know, our parameters are, are set as something you can pass in is that you're going to find you'll do a lot of experimentation when getting these networks working. You know, you'll, when you walk through a video on this stuff, the person doing the video, in this case me, um, is going to have probably run, you know, 20, 30, 40 different iterations with different parameters trying to find the one that works. Uh, what you're watching now was a, a couple of months of me, you know, plugging away at this, trying different things until it worked the way I wanted it to. So you should always come into this with you know, as many things as you can parameterized because you're probably going to change these things over time to solve different problems and to, to get it working on whatever your pro target problem is. All right, so we've set our optimizer. I'm going to set self.device equals t.device CUDA zero 
if t dot cuda dot is available else cpu and i'm going to go ahead and give us some helpful logging information uh, created critic network on device uh, hang on let's make this an f string so created critic created critic network on device self dot device and then we're going to say self dot to self dot device so this is always something you want to check um, you know just because you've installed everything you think you need to install for CUDA to work doesn't mean it's actually going to work you should always validate that you are running on the device that you think you're running on um, in this case, I want it to be running on a GPU. If we get CPU here, we want to go and troubleshoot that because that means that it's, it's going to run a lot slower. Um, and these things take long enough to train as it is. All right, uh, let's go ahead and set up our forward method. So this becomes fairly simple. Def forward, self, state, action, action value equals self.fc1 and what we're going to do is use torch cat so t.cat and that's going to be the state action pair on dimension one because it's a batch action value equals f.relu action value value equals self.fc2 so we're passing it through the second layer action value and then we are going to put in another f.relu an action value and then we'll finally pass it through our output layer our q1 self.q1 action value and then we're going to return Q1, the Q value of, of our network. Um, finally, just some housekeeping functions. We're going to set up save checkpoint. And it only needs self. And that's pretty simple. T.save self.state dict self.checkpoint file. and def load checkpoint self self.load state dict t.load self.checkpoint file all right we are done with our critic network so next up we're going to go ahead and code out the actor network um, it's going to be a little bit different. So the critic network took a state and an action because it needed to be able to, to judge how good that action was in a given state. Uh, our actor network just needs to be able to take a state and generate an action. So let's go ahead and get started. Class actor network. We are again going to inherit from nn.module def init self input dims fc1 dims we're again going to say 256 as a default um, fc2 dims is going to be 128 learning rate will be 10 e to the negative 3 by default and actions Two. name equals actor and checkpoint there equals temp slash td3 all right again we're going to call the superclass with actor network self and init and then we can probably copy some of these things from 
right up here. So I'm going to copy my whole self input dims, FC1, and actions, all that fun stuff. We're going to pull down here. Never type what you can copy. And then we're going to do self.fc1 equals nn.linear star self.inputdims self.fc1dims. So again, in this case, we're only we're only taking our input dimensions because there's no need to, we're not asking you to judge an action. We just need to take the state and then you know, take some intelligent action with that state in mind. Then self.fc2, linear, c1 dims, and self.fc2 dims. Again, we're just building up our network here. Outputs equals nn.linear self.fc2 dims. And in this case, instead of a one, we're going to say self.n actions. So we need to be able to output you know, across a, a number of actions that, that we can take. Um, we're going to say self.optimizer equals optim.atom self.parameters and lr equals learning rate. Oh, that canceled out more than I wanted it to. So you'll notice that I used atom down here um, and I used atom w up here. Um, again, this is one of those things that I found through experimentation. Using atom in both places uh, led to a little bit less exploration than I wanted. Um, setting atom w in both places never allowed the agent to learn. So I found for this particular problem uh, setting atom w, so atom with weight decay at the critic layer and then just plain old atom down here under the actor network uh, ended up being the optimum you know, answer for this problem. self.device equals t.device, same thing we did up above. So CUDA, in fact, let's just go copy it. All three of these lines. All right, so we have CUDA zero if t CUDA is available, else CPU. Uh, we're going to say created actor network on device, self.device, and then self.2, self.device. All right. Just like before, we're going to set a forward method. Uh, this time, though, it just needs state. We're going to set self.fc1 state x equals self.fc2, or sorry f.lu x x equals self dot fc2 x x equals f dot relu x and then we are applying a tan h activation function self dot output and x and then return x. All right, and then we are going to do our self checkpoint, uh, our save and our load checkpoint files here. And at that point, our networks class is done. So I think this is probably a good place to end the video. In the next, we are going to go and code the replay buffer.